So black hair has always been an essential component of black culture. Black hair requires upkeep in order for it to grow and remain healthy. So black women have always done their hair. It's just a part of our identity. Braids, locks, twists, and cornrows, etc. Cornrows are a really functional way of keeping black textured hair unknotted and neat, but like with style. So you can see why hair is such a big part of hip-hop and rap culture. These are styles of music which African-American communities created in order to affirm our identities and our voices. In the early 2000s, you saw many R&B stars wearing cornrows. Alicia Keys, Beyonce, R. Kelly, and many more. As hip-hop became more and more popular and integrated into pop culture, so did black culture. Eminem's album went four times platinum and he achieved immense success in the hip-hop world. Black culture had become popular. As the early 2000s turned into the 2010s, white people began to wear clothing and accessories associated with hip-hop. More and more celebrities could be seen wearing cornrows and braids and even grills. So by 2013, the fashion world had adopted cornrows as well. Cornrows and braids were seen on high fashion runways for brands like Marquesa and Alexander McQueen, and magazines had editorial campaigns featuring cornrows as a new urban hairstyle. Riff Raff came onto the scene, a suburban white middle-class man who almost ironically took on a black scent and wore braids and gold teeth. And then James Franco took inspiration from Riff Raff for his role as Alien in Spring Breakers. And pop stars and icons adopted black culture as a way of being edgy and gaining attention. In 2013, Miley Cyrus twerks and uses black women as props. And then in 2014, in one of her videos called This Is How We Do, Katy Perry uses ebonics and hand gestures and eats watermelons while wearing cornrows before cutting inexplicably to a picture of Aretha Franklin. Uh huh. I see you. So, as you can see, cultural appropriation was rampant. But not only were white people becoming rappers, but they were excelling in the world of hip hop. Macklemore and Ryan Lewis's song Thrift Shop garnered a number one spot on Billboard's year end chart for 2013, and then Iggy Zalea's song Fancy reached number one the following year. And in May of 2014, Forbes released an article titled Hip Hop's Unlikely New Star, A White Blonde Australian Woman. But at the same time, police brutality against black people came to the forefront in an incredible movement ignited by the murders of Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, Tamir Rice, Eric Garner, and many others. People began to protest institutionalized racism by marching and by using social media. Celebrities spread awareness and shared condolences, or at least some did, as Azealia Banks, a black female rapper, pointed out. As Azealia Banks observed in her tweets, white musicians who partook in hip-hop culture and adopted blackness, Iggy Azealia in particular, failed to speak on the racism that comes along with black identity. Banks and Azalea feuded on Twitter until Banks participated in an interview on New York's Hot 97. I have a problem when you're trying to, like, say that it's hip-hop and you're trying to, like, put it, like, up against black culture. Like, it's like mm. a cultural smudging was what I see. All it says to white kids is, like, oh, yeah, you're great, you're amazing, you can do whatever you put your mind to. And it says to black kids, you don't have sh you don't own sh not even the shit you created for yourself. And it makes me upset. That itself is what is so complicated when it comes to black culture. I mean, the line between cultural appropriation and cultural exchange is always going to be blurred, but here's the thing. Appropriation occurs when a style leads to racist generalizations or stereotypes where it originated, but is deemed as high fashion, cool, or funny when the privileged take it for themselves. Appropriation occurs when the appropriator is not aware of the deep significance of the culture that they are partaking in. Hip-hop stems from a black struggle. It stems from jazz and blues, styles of music which African Americans created to retain humanity in the face of adversity, which itself stems from songs used during slavery to communicate and survive. On a smaller scale, but in a similar vein, braids and cornrows are not merely stylistic. They're necessary in order to keep black hair neat. <laughs> so I've been seeing this question a lot on social media, and I think it's really relevant. What would America be like if we loved black people as much as we love black culture?